When the game controller was freed from wires, like many other gamers, I was very excited. Whether we're talking the computer or a console, I love not being limited in where I have to sit. It certainly makes the gaming experience much more comfortable and easier to get into. But batteries. Oh, batteries. First they were interchangeable and now you have to plug them in to charge them so they run out after a certain amount of time. And it takes some degree of energy to press all the buttons and move all the joysticks. I'm moving all the joysticks! Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today GameRanks asked the question, why can't game controllers be charged by use? So it's important to start off by saying the wireless controller isn't exactly new. There have been many different incarnations of the wireless controller over the years, and I can remember them as early as my childhood. In the 80s, there were wireless NES controllers, but even those weren't the first. Way back in the day, the Atari 2600 was actually the first console to have wireless controllers. And the controllers that they sold used radio waves in order to transmit the signals. Like the next few iterations of wireless controllers, they ate through batteries like no tomorrow. Eventually, they started using infrared, which is how a TV remote works and uses less batteries and is better but is not 100% accurate and also requires the controller to be pointed directly at an IR receiver device. Eventually we got to today where controllers use Bluetooth to connect to the console but more importantly have rechargeable batteries. And I have to say it is so nice not to be buying double A's every time a controller runs out of juice. I just plug the damn thing in any USB, generally overnight, and by the time I want to play games again, we're good. Or hell, I plug it into my laptop and continue playing while it charges, because my laptop's near me. Or even one of those things you can buy in the checkout for charging your phone on the go. You know, the battery reserves or whatever they're called. But being this is the future, even though that's pretty amazing, What's the next step? As you're playing a video game, you do generate kinetic energy as you're pressing buttons and moving joysticks, and as I said in the intro, I move all the joysticks. And it just seems like, well, if you can power a flashlight with a crank, why can't you power a controller with the endless movements that a gamer makes using its instruments of input? I mean, I've seen that Philips Hue tap touched thing. In theory, it could act as a remote for all the lights in my house, and supposedly it powers itself on the kinetic energy of your touch. So why can we do it for that, but not for game controllers? Well, in theory, we could do it for game controllers. You could absolutely convert the movements of the joysticks and the pressing of the buttons into energy. It's not a question of that. The technology certainly exists, as evidenced by the weird Philips Hue thing. Lights on, lights off, lights on. Lights off, there's no battery in this. How does it work? Wow. The way the Philips Hue works is it's never in an on position unless you're using it. Not only are you generating energy when you press one of the buttons, you're also telling the machine, turn on and use that energy right now to do the thing that this button says it does. Now let's imagine for a second you have a precision movement that you need to make using one of the joysticks. You're playing an FPS. Or hell, maybe you're even playing a real-time strategy on a console. They exist. You don't want to move a lot, you want to move a little bit. So you push that control stick in the tiniest manner. So, real question here, do you think that that generated enough energy to establish a Bluetooth connection to the console and transmit enough data to tell it that it's time to do something? Because every single movement of the controller would require that you establish a Bluetooth connection, because at the moment that is definitely the best way to do it. It's got great range, it can tell the difference between a couple different controllers, it doesn't have to be pointing at an IR receiver, it can't be interfered with by a radio station transmitting on a similar frequency, and it also takes a few seconds to connect generally. On top of that, doing it in a low power situation where it has to be off all the time, How's the game gonna tell your controller to rumble? I mean, you're just sitting there watching a cutscene and there's an explosion. Normally there'd be a rumble, but what have you done to generate energy to accommodate that rumble? Because a rumble is literally just a little motor inside your controller spinning. It's got a weight attached to it. And the resistance that that weight creates is the rumble. It takes a lot more energy than pressing buttons, I promise you. Think about the energy that it takes for you to press a button compared to the energy for you to pick up a small metal ball. Okay, neither of them are gonna wear you out, but it definitely takes more energy to pick up the metal ball than it does to press down the tiny little button, maybe about a millimeter or two. 
The amount of times you would have to press a button in order to maintain a constant Bluetooth connection between the controller and the console is significantly more than you're going to press when playing literally any game, including Street Fighter. And on top of that, you need a constant connection between the controller and the game system or computer now. A controller doesn't just act as an input device. They've got microphones on them now, speakers. And like I said before, pretty much every single controller has a rumble device in it now. It's not just input, it takes output as well. It's part of the game. It's part of the world in its own way. It attempts to do things that immerse you in the game that you can't classify as input. And you couldn't do that if it operated in a low power situation. You need a battery, so why can't you charge a battery? Well, for the same reason you can't keep a controller on. You'd have to press buttons so much that it pretty much nullifies any game experience that you could possibly have. Could you make a device that certainly you could sit there and jam buttons in and keep on for a certain period of time? Yeah, but why would you? That would require the game to literally be about pressing buttons enough time to keep the controller on, which is quite self-defeating if you ask me. It's a cool idea, and it certainly would be neat, but the power requirements for a controller are just too high to do it in a manner that isn't crappy or extremely limiting at very least. And no, a controller is not a high power device by any means, and it doesn't have much effect on your power bill, so to speak, but cranking a flashlight that's literally a few LEDs is not the same thing as an always connected Bluetooth device. I mean, you don't need Mr. Fusion in order to use a game controller. But until a game controller can do everything that it does now, as well as whatever we dream up for them to do in the future, with almost no power, literally almost no power at all, which at our current understanding of the universe is physically impossible, we're gonna have to deal with the inconvenience of plugging it in every once in a while. When I grew up, we literally had to be about five feet away from the game. That was super annoying. When you have parents that are like, don't be so close to the TV. And it's like, well, the wire doesn't really give me much choice. You know, let's just say it's nice to have wireless controllers, especially rechargeable ones. I mean, I don't have to go to the store and pick up batteries ever. Well, I do, but not for this. What's your favorite controller or input device for console or PC? Let's have a raging argument about it in the comments. I, I, meant, I did not mean raging argument, I meant civil discussion. Let's have a civil discussion about it in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week. And the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. And we will see you next time right here on GameRanks.